you've come to the right place. If you're a course creator looking to build more impact, income, and freedom, LMS Cast is the number one podcast for course creators just like you. I'm your guide, Chris Badgett. I'm the co-founder of the most powerful tool for building, selling, and protecting engaging online courses called Lifter LMS. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. My name is Chris Badgett and I'm joined by a special guest, Matt Inglot from Freelance Transformation. It's a podcast. If you build LMS or membership sites for clients, you're going to want to keep an eye on Matt's podcast. Uh, you can find out more about him at freelancetransformation.com. He's also got a free email mini course to kind of help you level up as a freelancer. Welcome to the show, Matt. Hey, thanks so much for having me. In our pre-chat, we were having a conversation. It actually sounds like we have a lot in common. We've, we've built sites for the expert industry or membership sites. Uh, even some of the nuances of what you were talking about in terms of um, you know, building custom software on top of the membership for various uh, use cases. This is, this is totally in, in my wheelhouse and what I used to do as a freelancer and as an agency owner. Um, can you talk a little bit to the builders out there, the people who build websites for the LMS industry? Just share your experience of going from just building websites or any websites or marketing sites, brochure sites to this specialization in memberships, e-commerce courses and all this. How did that, how did that transformation happen for you? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, to put it in context, I've been doing this for 15 years now. And I started out with uh, just building websites for people because, frankly, I needed money. I was trying to put myself through school. My parents couldn't pay my tuition. Um, and uh, I was working for a startup that went under pretty much as soon as I started trying to live on my own. So I desperately needed cash. Uh, or, you know, I wouldn't be able to get my education. So I just started building websites for people because it's something that I knew how to do. And I knew nothing about finding clients, about what makes a high value client. Um, you could argue I didn't know that much about building websites either. Uh, but, you know, through sheer tenacity and just talking through every single person that I met and telling them I build websites, I got my first few clients. And that kind of started me on a journey of getting increasingly better at building websites, getting increasingly more money for building those websites, and eventually hiring a team. And eventually we, er, we had an office for a few years before I realized I hate having an office. And that was kind of a decision I backtracked out of. Um, but basically, uh, I started off just on a very generalist path of if you need a website, we'll build it for you. And then that later, I kind of it clicked on me that the people that were willing to pay most uh, to get a website built were people uh, that were able to get a very specific business result for the website. So it's not so much that people pay for your website because uh, you know it's pretty or that you know you put a lot of time and effort into it. They're willing to pay for it if it actually creates results for them, like bringing in more leads, bringing in more sales, uh, doing something valuable for them. So I started seeking out more of those types of clients and that started to really revolutionize my business. And I went from really struggling to actually making pretty darn good money uh, building these things. And then as I kind of progressed and as I kind of realized where we deliver the most value, I realized that as, as cool as the marketing sites we were building were and as cool as the results we were able to create for clients where we were really, really, really making money and really having clients that stayed with us for years and years were online business owners. Or as, as you said it very nicely, it, it, you can even chunk that down further to uh, the expert industry, which is people that have basically built an online business around selling some sort of digital product that basically packages up their information, their knowledge, their tools, whatever. And we realized, I realized that some of these people uh, were really being limited in their growth of their business because... Uh, 
the tools and the software weren't all that flexible. So they had this great idea of what they wanted to create for their members or for their customers. And then they would go and they try to build it. And basically, even today, if you're trying to do more than just build an online course where you just share videos with people, it's pretty hard to do that. You, you know, these packages aren't that flexible. So we started building a lot of custom functionality. So the types of clients that we work for, they're heavily custom sites. So it's not just like an online course. It's, uh, for example, like a stock photo membership site or like a site with financial tools or a site that quizzes students and lets teachers see their results and things like that. So as soon as you kind of start getting limited by the technology, that's where we come in and we open up an entire new world of possibilities and most importantly, an entire new world of revenue, of customer retention, and a lot of other great things that are very hard to achieve with just video courses. Wow, I love that. This is, uh, I think we are birds of a feather because <laughs> um, I have this concept called Course Plus. Like the most valuable sites I've built for clients, it, it wasn't just the course, there was this other stuff. It could be plus community, plus live events, plus coaching, group coaching, private coaching, plus other software, plus other resources, plus other products. So if you're in the business of getting results for somebody, they often need more than just information that comes through a video and a course. While that's valuable, to make it super high value, you know, your client, you have to like surround them with all these resources to help their customer get success. And some of the biggest sites and most profitable sites we ever built um, in our agency was when we would take an expert, we would build, it was like course plus coaching plus community with like leaderboards and stuff. And this software, we would add like this additional layer of software where members of this particular platform were putting in their metrics and getting really personalized coaching. It was like, this isn't something you can buy off the shelf and just put together. This is a custom solution for a particular leader in a particular industry that does things a particular way. So mm -hmm. I'd love to hear more about how, how your approach and experience with that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you're bringing that up because, yeah, it sounds like we're kindred spirits here. So you bring up online courses. So obviously there's people out there making a lot of money through online courses and that's awesome. But your traditional video course has a huge business model problem in that it's very hard to turn that into a membership site of any kind or any sort of recurring revenue. So basically once people buy your course and get your videos, that's basically it. And most people that I've seen that have tried to turn that into monthly revenue have basically failed. And in many cases have actually made less money off that model than they did when they just sold the price, just sold the course as a one time big money thing. So you could sell a course for like 500 or a thousand bucks up front, or you can try charging like $49 a month for it. And that's a flaw. The latter is flawed because like once people have the videos, why are they going to keep paying you $49 a month for access? Yeah, if you and want recurring revenue, you need to have recurring value. And exactly. That's 100% uh, <laughs> in. And yeah. especially when you realize that if all you're doing is giving someone videos, like the crappy thing is, I would argue most people that get a video course don't actually take action. Yeah. And it might not be necessarily the problem with a content. The content's fantastic. It's just learning and education are very difficult problems. So people get excited, they'll buy a course, and they'll drop off. So how can you turn that into a recurring revenue model where in, in three months they've completely lost interest in the course? Um, they're going to cancel very quickly. So what we found works really well instead, and, and you've kind of alluded to that, is that plus part where it's more than that. In our case, what's worked really well for our clients is giving people tools. Um, you might what not kind of be tools? willing to pay $49. Yeah, let, let's talk about that. So, so you might not be willing to pay $49 a month for access to videos that you already bought, but you'll certainly pay for ongoing access to tools and functionality. So for example, um, that might be uh, any sort of thing that allows you to make continuous progress towards your education. So let's say like a tool that helps you implement what's being taught. And, and that varies a lot, but 
It could be pretty simple. It could be pretty complicated. Um, like for example, the most complicated thing we ever built was this whole like financial portfolio analyzer tool that lets you actually input your investment portfolio and track it. That's almost like a SaaS product. But then there's much simpler things like, like on templates or something. Is. Yeah. Sorry. Like templates, like you could provide templates that help people execute on some idea you taught in the course. Yeah, templates, quizzes, uh, ongoing exercises, progress tracking. Uh, in one client's case, it's actually allowing their t the teachers of the students to see their progress, which is huge. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do to provide interactivity. Uh, and people are way more willing to pay for that. And, and along with like some of the other things that you mentioned, like coaching, ongoing help, access to community, anything that allows them to get ongoing value and not just passive lessons. Yeah. And I, ha I just want to share just like a, so for example here, that's my favorite word in teaching. So for example, and if you doubt that you can sell a, a client website, a really high ticket, um, Thing. Let me just explain to you this. I have a software company, Lifter LMS. I just paid for a $30,000 program that includes courses, but it includes a lot of other stuff. And there is so much recurring value that, I mean, if you don't think you can sell, a, let's say a $30,000 website, I'm telling you right here, I'm a customer on the other end of all that where I bought a program and there's a lot of other people in the program. So you can create incredible value for your clients by helping them, you know, put together, sometimes they need help figuring out like how to create the most value too. You know, that thing where as a web consultant or a platform builder, you start getting all these questions outside the scope of the web of like, Hey, mm -hmm. we're going to put a website together. I'd love to hear how you as a freelancer help your clients maximize the revenue they could potentially generate because a lot of the best platforms are, there's like this magical co-creation that happens between the expert in their field and you as the expert in online and putting tools together and, and kind of envisioning the project. How do you maximize the value creation between you and the client? Yeah, that's a great point because a, a huge mistake freelancers and agency owners and so on make is they position themselves and treat themselves as the people that just do the work. Yeah. So tell me what to let, do. Like, what do you want? Yeah, Just exactly. Tell you tell, yeah. I'm, I'm an employee. You tell me what to do. Yeah. And so let, let's step away from websites and LMS for a second. Last year, uh, we bought a house and I wanted to turn our garage into like a proper like wood shop because that's one of my hobbies. So I had to start hire, I had to start looking for contractors. And one of the hardest things I found was finding an electrician that could do more than just quote me on what I asked for and actually advise me on like what the best way to do my lighting setup was, the best way to do my electrical, uh, how many outlets I needed. Uh, to be honest, they all kind of sucked at that and it took a yeah. while to find someone that could really work with me because they didn't see themselves as in the business of giving advice. They saw themselves as being in the business of, if you want an outlet here, I will put an outlet here. They're if literally you want called this many lights on the ceiling. I'll put them there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the same problem with web development for sure. You know, you tell me what to build and I'll build it for you. But like you pointed out, most clients have no idea. Even if they've, even if they're already doing well selling information, they probably have no idea what's possible. They probably have no idea where you can create leverage. I've been doing this for 15 years. I've worked with a lot of clients. I know what's worked for people. I know what's worked for multiple people. I know the common mistakes. How crappy of it, how crappy of me would it be to withhold all of that for my client? Right? So instead, we take a very advisory role. Um, it, it's really the strategy that we help them with and building the platforms almost just like ancillary to that. We help them figure out what to build, what's actually going to drive their business forward. And that's kind of always the end goal is how can we make you more money? And if you can reframe your thinking from tell me what to do and I'll do it. And, you know, if, if you're thinking like that, you're competing with every, you know, guy and girl on Upwork and all the other, you know, sites to I can help you figure out what to do. Then suddenly like you're, you're one of a handful of people in the world that can answer that question. 
And that's a very important question that people are willing to pay a lot of money to solve. So in our case, uh, we do a lot to continuously meet with our clients, do strategy calls with them, and help them figure out how we can actually help them grow their business forward. And we focus a lot on numbers, you know, what are the key metrics of your site and how are those metrics doing? Um, so sometimes it is building new features and functionality for members, but there's a lot of other ways to build value for clients. Um, with one client, we actually helped them fix their pricing because yeah. their pricing was really complicated. They had a huge array of products and they were basically tripping over their own feet as a result of that. And we basically helped them narrow it down to three levels of course that you can purchase. We helped them figure out uh, the different segments of people that would actually buy these three levels and what the key leverage points are that would cause someone to, for example, upgrade from like basic to premium to then like ultimate. Um, and as a result, the client is basically selling the exact same information as before, but making way more money at it because they're delivering the right value to each segment. So sometimes it's not even a programming challenge. Um, sometimes it's a matter of uh, building in the features and functionality that get people to upgrade their memberships, right? That's a whole game in itself. What can we do to convince you you do want to become a member or you do want to go up to the next tier? Um, sometimes it has nothing to do with members at all and how can you automate your business? It's fascinating how many manual things business owners do because they're not programmers and they have no idea that the computer can basically auto magically do that for them. So yeah. they, end up, they end up hiring real staff, paying real wages, basically moving data around between systems. And then it's very easy to say, you know, for five, 10 grand, uh, we'll make these two systems talk to each other and you'll never have to pay someone to work with that system again. And we're very good at doing that. And they like the idea of not paying all that staff. So it's a win-win. Wow, that's, I mean, that's a gold mine right there. Thank you for sharing all that. In, in terms of the, I'm just representing the audience of the, the, the platform builder out there. What are some tips you have around creating that recurring value for your web clients? Like you mentioned that the, do you make suggestions or do you get them on some kind of retainer that includes some kind of thing? Or do you just keep blowing their mind with ideas and how you can save them money if they keep investing? Like what are, what's a pro, what are some like simple rules or process or tactics that people could try to get outside of we're going to build a project and walk away to we're going to build a project and create a long-term relationship as a technology partner? Absolutely. I mean, that completely changed my business was finding clients that I could keep working with because I think most people listening to the show don't really like finding new clients, don't really like selling, right? I, I find freelancers aren't exactly, you're out there trying to practice your craft and the more time you have to spend selling, the less time you get to do that. Uh, so that completely changed my life is getting to a point where once we started working with the client, year one would be the least amount of money they ever paid us instead of the most. Because after we proved ourselves and did amazing things for them, they would want to keep working with us and keep having amazing things done. So in our case, there's a couple of things we do. Yeah, absolutely. There is like a yearly support and maintenance retainer where they pay us a certain amount of money and we basically make sure everything runs perfectly for them. Right. But that that retainer is not really a ton of money. It's a few thousand dollars a year per client. Um, but it's the wedge in the door to be able to maintain that relationship, to make sure that we're constantly communicating. Because um, if you don't have any sort of maintenance agreement or anything, I find clients are afraid to talk to you because they're afraid of getting a bill, right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's <laughs> one of those things where like, you know, you talk to a lawyer and next thing you know, a bill shows up in a couple of weeks and you know, you're like, I just asked you how your day was, right? <laughs> What's happening here? So, so that allows them to communicate freely with us. But then I make a very active effort to set up regular calls with my clients. I even have an article on my website talking about what, what I call strategy calls. 
So the point of it is to get on the call, get on the phone with them. Let's do say you charge a for quarter. those. Sorry. Do you charge for those strategy no. calls? Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I make a point not to do that. And remember, they they are paying us yearly, so they're a client, right? Yeah. They're not like tire kickers. Uh, I happily, I will happily with a, meet with a client all day long, anytime, anywhere, um, because we get to have really important conversations about their business. And that's a way where I can provide value to them, right? Because again, they don't understand what the uh, KPIs are in their business. They don't understand what's holding them back. So we have, you know, a virtual coffee for an hour and suddenly they walk away with a lot of value, a lot of ideas. But more often than not, those calls also turn into opportunities. Like, for example, uh, I once sat down with a client because they had questions about their analytics. And a week later, I was doing a $40,000 website rebuild for them. That would have never happened if we hadn't sat down to look at those analytics. So that so, coffee and that hour of your time, I mean, it always comes back around. I, I heard it's a, one of my clients who was actually teaching sales stuff taught me this. He said, your clients are not in the witness protection program. Like <laughs> you should talk to them. <laughs> like a lot yeah. of Yeah. <laughs> and it's weird because it's, it's probably the most important part of a relationship, but the, it's so easy to get into that mind frame where somehow they're like wasting your time or, you know, you want, you want to focus, hunker down over your keyboard and, and focus on your work, but have those conversations and make sure to have those conversations strategically. Right. Again, it, they're, they're not useful conversations if you have that employee mindset where you sit down with them and expect them to give you directions and tell you what they want done. Advisor. They don't know. Right. So these conversations are opportunity to explore that and figure out, you know, how they can make improvements in their business. What challenges are they having? So there is a mindset shift. But once you have a mindset shift, uh, those calls are absolute gold. How do you, um, how would you advise somebody who, I see some people, I know like when you're advising a client, it takes a degree of confidence. It takes some like just time in your industry so you can see trends and be able to like offer, like you can, you can project, you can see value that you could offer because of your experience and the patterns you've seen before. But how to, any other tips to helping someone make the transition from like contractor to confident advisor? Yeah, absolutely. First and foremost, decide to make that transition. Yeah. Right. That, that's step number one, because as soon as you decide to make that transition, you're hopefully analyzing everything that you're doing just in the back of your head as you're doing it and asking yourself, am I being strategic about this or am I being an employee? Right. So just having that voice in the back of your head, that second set of eyes in the back of your head looking at your actions is going to change a lot about what you do. Second thing is practice. So now go out and do it. You're not going to get it right the first time. That's life. Uh, you might get it right the 10th time, the 50th time. Uh, but every time you get to sit down with someone, whether they're a new client or an existing client, that is an opportunity to practice building that mindset. Third thing, educate yourself. Uh, uh, that's the hardest thing when you're starting out, as you alluded to, is you don't have that experience. But there's ways of getting that experience other than just working on a lot of client projects. That will come. But spend the time educating yourself. Figure out what it is that, first of all, businesses want. And I'll give you the shortcut answer. They want money. But take a bit of time to actually learn how businesses think, how they function, what, uh, you know, uh, what basic accounting terms mean, like what is revenue, what is profits. Um, that's all stuff that business owners care a lot about. And most of it's very simple, but that's their language. You want to learn how to speak their language. Then you want to learn how your industry helps impact the things that these business owners care about. So stop thinking in terms of how can we make things more usable or how can we make things more pretty or how can we make things more efficient? Like programmers in particular are terrible at this. They'll spend weeks and weeks learning how to optimize like MySQL databases. Clients don't know what MySQL is and they don't care. Um, they care how can we generate more revenue. If somehow maybe optimizing the database will do that, great. It probably won't. 
probably the right answer there is to just buy a bigger server. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Yeah. Um, so spend the time figuring out how your industry can actually create movement in those numbers. Start reading the resources, the case studies, the you know, industry journals where people have accomplished these things um, and figure out how they've done it. The nice thing about the internet is there's a wealth, wealth, wealth of information about how to do this stuff. We didn't really have that starting out. Like, you know, there was some information online, but nothing like today. So educate yourself and then take the education and start applying it to clients. You'll notice that you'll start speaking differently to them, but the solutions that you recommend to them will be different. So again, make, make, make the conscious effort to make that transition. Start practicing. Every opportunity you speak with someone is a chance to practice. And then do everything to educate yourself about how businesses work and how you can actually create value for them. Yeah, I love that. And the, that is a mistake I see a lot of builders make is they, um, they get into the techno babble. The client mm. is, they're an expert. They're thinking about ROI, return on their investment. They're thinking they want, they want automation. If you can like take a job that they were getting ready to hire somebody for and you just automate it, I mean, that adds incredible value to their business. And it's always like, you know, how I always try to think when I'm working with a client, how can what we do, how can they get a 10x return? Like I've seen a, a project that we built and over time invoiced around six figure, 100K for it just over a year or two. And, but that client made several million dollars in the first year. So there was like a big ROI. Yeah, it was expensive, but they got a ton of value out of it. So the business owner often thinks in terms of return on investment. And if you communicate in those ways, it's, it's helpful. I wanted to ask you about um, getting these types of clients. Everything changed for me when I started focusing on the LMS and the membership site and e-commerce industry um, in terms of like, okay, people like, oh, that's what you do. And then, um, but with the, you know, I had a lot of clients doing recurring value as well, adding new things, advising. I actually didn't need that many. And for us, our engine of growth was, um, it was really just word of mouth. And in some ways it didn't even work that well because the clients kind of, if you're really good, they want to keep you to all to themselves and they don't, want, they're not going to tell their friends cause they're worried that you may get fractured focus. But, uh, I mean that, so that's, you know, just something in my story, but what do you recommend for people to get leads like more clients like this for the for the LMS and the membership industry should they go to conferences should they do content marketing should they do paid advertising what do you do what do you recommend yeah so again i teach a whole course on this and, <laughs> okay and it's it's i love that you're bringing all this stuff up because like the same realizations that you had are the same realizations that not only i have had but from running my podcast, I've realized that a lot of these realizations are, co are the common difference between freelancers that consistently struggle and the ones that are able to close like $10,000 deals, $50,000 deals, 100,000 plus deals and do so you know, w without breaking a sweat. Um, it's all the same transformation. So you basically asked, well, how can I find these amazing clients that are willing to spend, you know, $100,000, let's say on an LMS system. First thing you got to do is figure out who they are, which most people miss this step, skip the step, don't think it's important, whatever. If you can't define your client, I cannot tell you anything that will help you find those clients. I don't have that answer because if you don't know who you're looking for, you will never ever find them. That's just fact. So for example, if you're thinking about LMS systems, there's a ton of different ways where you can define clients, but probably one of them is actually revenue, right? If you're trying to sell your services to someone that's just starting a membership site and they have no money coming in, they're not going to be have $100,000 to give you to build this thing unless they somehow secured a lot of funding. I think right. that's a really important point. I just want to park on it a second. Yeah. Like if I was going to do it, I would, I would in my qualifying the lead or like the type of marketing I do, I would say something like already making at least a hundred K from your expertise, which means they, maybe they're a professional speaker, a book author, a, um, 
like a professor at a university or something. But like if they have a hundred K they could, they will invest 10 K if you can help them, you know, scale and grow and maybe not live on planes and hotels. I mean, there's all kinds of things that happen to experts that are already making money with their knowledge. But if somebody's at the very beginning and they're like, that's not bad, but if somebody hasn't made money with their expertise before, that's a totally different type of client. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's yeah. so important. And it goes, it goes beyond qualifying them, yeah. but also figuring out where we can find them. So, so that's one thing and is revenue. Uh, next thing is hopefully you can bring it down to beyond just people that have a lot of revenue and want a membership site. So you actually qualified it further. Uh, you said, for example, speakers and authors. And there's right? another, I just want to share, this is uh, yeah. this kind of old story, but uh, I used to do a lot in the Infusionsoft community, which means mm -hmm. they're already paying $2,000 mm -hmm. a year for very expensive marketing automation and software tools. Yep. So if they're already doing that, they're, they're kind of, and, and we did a lot of integration with Infusionsoft back at that time, they're, they're already kind of getting more qualified. Wonderful. So, so let's add that in. Yeah. So, you know, so we've got revenue, we, we've got, uh, qual we've qualified more what they do, for example, speakers and authors. And now we have a signal on top of that, they're Infusionsoft users, and Infusionsoft costs an ungodly amount of money to use. <laughs> right. So we know now, we, first of all, we can have a clear picture in our mind of who these people are. Uh, two, we have a good idea that they're serious. And three, we have, probably have a good idea that we can actually help them solve real problems. Like you said, like there, there's limitations speakers run into with you know, so many hotels, so many planes, so many speeches that they can give. So now what we have is, an, is a high value client, high value because we can create a lot of high value for them and they're able to pay for that value. Um, and two, they're identifiable, which means that we can actually figure out where the heck they are right? Where can we find congregations of these people? And that if you don't have this information, you can spend the rest of your life looking for these supposed high value clients and never find them or be looking in the wrong places. So I'll tell you right now that people that, you know, spend their lives uh, sharing their expertise and they're in hotels and planes and whatever, they're super busy. They don't hang around on free Facebook groups, right? The people that hang around on free Facebook groups are people getting started. So if you go on free Facebook groups and try to help those people and promote your services and stuff, um, your chances of finding these clients aren't so great. If instead you figure out where these people do hang out, your chances go up astronomically. That might be paid groups. That might be like even an Infusionsoft group. Uh, quite frankly, that's probably conferences. Yeah. Uh, that's networking. That's, you know, I like conferences because... What they do is for a few thousand dollars, I can go into a room full of people that are likely to meet, need my services. And think about this. If I get one client from that, that's maybe a $40,000 deal to start. And that's going to increase every single year. So why wouldn't I go there? Why wouldn't I, you know, pound yeah. the pavement and like, like someone's done all the hard work of basically roping all these people together for me, marketing that conference to them, spending who knows how many dollars putting it all together. And all I have to do is buy a plane ticket, conference ticket and show up. And like, I'll add one more to that. Ridiculous. Which is, I'll add one more, which is if you yeah. sponsor it and oftentimes there's a cheap sponsor. It's not cheap, but there's like, you don't have to be the title sponsor on the lanyard mm. or whatever, but if you can sponsor there's often like a speaker sponsored dinner. So not only will you, you can actually be at a table and then you're going to get the question at some point, Oh, who are you? What do you do? And if this is like, Oh, I help people just like you, you know, get scale and 10 X their revenue and automate and reduce whatever you're like in the right room with the right people at the right time that are qualified. It's conferences are good, but you got to put in the work to, to get the most out of them. Yeah, absolutely. But and, and that, that's maybe another really good point is, uh, I mean, unfortunately, a lot of people just don't want to put in the work. And I think it's not really that they don't want to put in the work. They don't have the confidence in themselves that they're able to go do that. You know, there's that little voice in your head that says, oh, Chris can do it. Matt can do it, but I can't do it. And like, I got to say, like, I am an introvert. 
And I grew up basically being like a super introvert, focused on my computer, focused on programming video games. So, you know, at 20 years old, when I was first trying to find clients, I was awkward as hell. It was so hard to just walk up to a person and strike up a conversation. Uh, you know, I, I, I would rather like jump off a bridge and do that. Yeah. But I forced myself to do it. And now it's not so bad, right? I'll, I'll never be like the life of a party, but I can do these critical things that will get me the business that I need. And I'll take that trade all day long versus hunting around, you know, Facebook groups, trying to find like somebody, anybody that is willing <laughs> yeah. to pay me something for my services or hunting around job sites. Like the high value clients aren't doing that. Right. And yeah. even if they are, you're, you know, if you're on a job site, you're competing with so many other people that are basically all pitching the same thing. Versus if you can position yourself as the only expert in the room on a painful problem, then they all want to talk to you. And as far as they're concerned, you're only, you're the only person in the world that can solve this for them. That's awesome. And I totally resonate with what you're saying. I'm actually an extreme introvert as well. Sometimes people think I'm extroverted because I'm on all these videos and podcasts and everything. But if I'm at a conference, I'm likely not going to be speaking on a stage. I, if I'm at the, some kind of social event at the conference, I'm not going to be in the center of the room. But I'll be networking the crowd. And sometimes when you're working with the expert industry, you're going to make a connection, not even with the expert themselves, but with their like assistant or their marketing person or somebody else on their team like it's a it's just a conversation it's all about just having conversations you don't have to be super extroverted to do that yeah and, and they lead to amazing things like we yeah. were talking before the show started about how you and i connected and it was a mutual friend yeah. and like i i met this person at a conference a few <laughs> years ago and he, yeah. he he's made a number of amazing introductions for me but i, I literally wouldn't be on this show if I hadn't met him. And I'll right? tell you how I met, I met this person was, uh, I met somebody else at like a very small, intimate six person mastermind that later introduced me to this person. And, and that was for me getting outside of the building and going and, and investing in my business with a, a, a little mastermind uh, thing. But it's, it's all about getting outside of the building and it's not, and people make recommendations and, and I, rec I recommend people you do that as well. Like if you see how you can add value and make an introduction, that's helpful. I mean, you can be annoying with introductions and like be like doing it all over the place. But when you see like a really key one that's like, oh, so-and-so needs to meet so-and-so, make it happen. You never know mm -hmm. what can come from that. Yeah, build, build those relationships. And actually, like when you say, like, go out there, go into the outside world, you could literally do that. I mean, we just talked about a lot of ways that you can get really good results from that. But if you just decide to end this podcast, learn nothing from it, and just simply go out and talk to people, just talk to people, you will get business. Like, if you do nothing else, you will still get business. That is how I started. You will not get the highest paying clients. You will not, you know, you will not magically make a fortune overnight. But just simply as soon as you start talking to people, things happen, right? They, they always do. And now, now instead of ignoring everything we talked about, now you start layering it on. So instead of just talking to anyone, I'm actually going to identify who my high value clients are. And I'm going to put myself in positions where I can be speaking to them how can you not get business? How can you not build an amazing business doing that? I mean, you, you will get clients. It is like, it is a fact. Yeah, it's a rare skill, just like you mentioned in the beginning with the um, modifying your garage. Like if you are become, you embody the advisory role, not just the implementer of whatever they say, and you do a little work to identify who you serve, and when you meet and you go to where those people are and, and people are like, so who are you? What are you doing? You have a short, non-cheesy elevator pitch ready that's like, oh, I help, you know, financial experts. Let's say you're at FinCon, which is a financial expert mm -hmm. conference. Oh, I help financial experts grow and scale through, you know, training platforms or something like that. And then you just stop right there. You don't have to give your whole story. And they're like, oh, tell me more. If they're interested, they'll, they'll ask you to elaborate. And it'll, uh, it'll just keep going. And if somebody's a good fit, it's going to turn into business. Yeah, absolutely.
Um, Matt, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Um, if you want to check out Matt's agency website, that's Tilted Pixel. What's the URL? TiltedPixel.com. And then you are at FreelanceTransformation.com. If, you're list- if you build websites for clients or do any kind of freelancing, go check out Matt's podcast, Freelance Transformation. And also head on over to FreelanceTransformation.com and uh, sign up for his free email course. What can people expect inside of that? So it's a highly condensed uh, version of how to start finding clients more intelligently. Um, Basically stripped it down to what are the most essential steps that you can be taking to get started today. And if you just follow along, I mean, quite frankly, you're gonna get clients. I've had people get some really cool results and also really cool insights just by following along with the free stuff. Um, You don't have to pay a dime for it. Uh, You just have to do the work. Um, And it's basically going to take a lot of what we talked about today and put it into like a step-by-step context for you that you can follow daily. That's awesome. Well, Matt, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. We'll have to do it again sometime. Thanks so much, Chris. And that's a wrap for this episode of LMS Cast. I'm your guide, Chris Badgett. I hope you enjoyed the show. This show was brought to you by Lifter LMS, the number one tool for creating, selling, and protecting engaging online courses to help you get more revenue, freedom, and impact in your life. Head on over to lifterlms.com and get the best gear for your course creator journey. Let's build the most engaging results getting courses on the internet.